management program. And it's good to have you, good to have you this morning. It's a very chilly morning if I just stare outside my window. I don't know how um, your place looks like this morning in terms of weather, the weather. You can also make sure that you have a cup of water. I know you'll be listening in a lot, but make sure you have a glass of water where you are or probably a hot cup of coffee that would really, really help in listening into the conversation. It's already top of the hour, 10 a.m. And welcome to this amazing, amazing event that has been put together by the Career Hub program. And it's so amazing to see. We're already 65 of us. And of course, we are want to dive, delve into this conversation, remaining valuable in a changing job market. We have, and we have lined up very amazing speakers who are going to be sharing their stories, experiences. And then um, I hope you have your pen and paper just to note down some of the things that you need to know. I must tell you that uh, the speakers that we have in the room have the right experience. And um, I know we are in for an amazing ride. So if you can hear my voice, can it, right in the chat box where you're listening in from, where you're tuned in from. And I hope you've invited your friends as well. <laughs> so I'm in Nairobi. So Karibu Sana for those of us who are not in Nairobi. You can just put that in the chat box where you're listening in from. Really, really appreciate. And that will also tell me what you guys are listening in. I see Rachel is from Kilimani, Karibu. Hey, those sides there. Eh? Karibu Sana. Uh, um, loud and clear. Thank you, Alvin. Keep the responses coming. I can see somebody from Kasarani, Nelson from Karatina. I see uh, Oscar Opio representing all the way from Dala. Hey, Kisumu, Kisumu Bear. We have some Palaweba Renyo. Welcome, welcome. God be I'm so sorry about that, guys. And just like that, I threw myself out of the room. I, I clicked the leave the room button. But I had seen a couple of responses that had just come in. Karibu Sana listening in from Gong. Odinga, Karibu. Then there's um, Chad. I read karaoke. Hmm. Hmm. This is a, I can read that out Yeah. And um, in the room, and trust me, um, this is gonna be a very event. Very event. I have listened to these speakers and I've heard their stories. Edna, keep on bring. Just keep on writing in the chat box. Edna from Kitui, uh, Karibu Sana, uh, Robert Ongodia, Ongodia from Uganda. Zimmerman, hey, representing James Karibu Sana, Karibu Sana in the room. I'm so sorry for a second. I, I, I decided just to leave the room. I don't know how that happened, but I clicked leave the room back on and I found myself outside. I see Beatrice Ewa and Yeshi from Siyoki Mao. This is exciting. This is exciting. If you have a friend, if you have a relative who's not in the room to listen to this conversation, because trust me, they are life changing. You better share that link right now because. What you're about to hear will transform your life, will change something in your mindset right now. It's going to bring a new perspective on how you look at your career and just how to, how to ensure that you're aligning yourself and you're adding value and you're valuable because things are changing for, for sure. Times are changing. When Corona 
kids in one of the things people are struggling with was how do I remain valuable? Changed companies are looking for ways of downsizing. And how do I become that person who stands out and say, you know, you're speaking out loud, your brand is just speaking out loud that you know what? If you dare my name, then trust me, your organization is gonna lose value. The Career Hub program is about transforming purposeful, purposeful people mindsets. And that's our mission. Centonome is about transforming purposeful people's mindset to ensure that they are creating wealth in their career and they're living abundantly. So how does the Career Hub program come in? The program that has sponsored this amazing event by, by ensuring that you package yourself. We give you the skills that you need to package yourself and become a person who stands out. It doesn't matter the industry that you are in, but you will definitely stand out. I can see so right in the chat box, I can see Nasubo from Isiolo, Karibu Sana Nasubo, Resna from, Resna Miro from Machakos, good to hear you. When Nata, Nata from Machakos, receive my greetings. Amaluya. So if you hear a lot of greetings, just understand where I'm coming from. Just understand where I'm coming from. So in the next bit, we'll be hearing, we have an amazing, amazing lineup of speakers and I'll just quickly read out their names as a, and just read a little bit about them, just mention them as we proceed with the event this morning. So we have, um, hmm, I'm just excited when I read out these names. TV, he's a CC, or AMREF flying doctors. I don't know that Stephen can remember me, but I with him. His story transformed my way of thinking. Florence Commando, Centonomy Alumni Career. This lady came back to Kenya. And let me tell you, she has a story. So she has an experience from abroad and in Kenya. She's going to bring that together and just help us understand how the career her program just help her start looking at things from a different perspective. Then we have James Watere. He's a human resource consultant and the career advisor. So he's going to tell us, what is, how does your CV, how should your CV look like? What should stand out? When employers are looking for, you know, the right person to, to hire. What the career program is also a, an image consultant, a soft skills coach, and there's so much more that um, Winnesi can also uh, tell us this morning. I just love, love, love. The, the, the lineup of speakers. So I have you have your pen and paper next to you. And of course, I'll add a glass of water so that we just kick off in the next three minutes. Um, I can see a couple of us whose microphones are not activated. I'll kindly request the admins because we have people who are working in the background. The Santi Sana autonomy, just make sure that everybody joins in and their mics are on. Just a couple of thousands. Please ensure that your mic is um, switched off. Yeah, it's uh, stand off. You see that kind of red line that just passes uh, across the mic. So make sure it is it is not activated so that we are able to listen to the speakers. Your videos are equally turned off. Just to ensure that we are able to concentrate. I'll also turn off mine at some point once we start listening to the speakers. Um, and this is amazing. So the idea is to ensure that the tips that you're going to carry, you're going to know down today. Help your life, and one of the things I keep on telling people you don't have to implement everything. Hey, yeah, well, that will be so stressful. Just pick out at least three things that you're going to implement. And the reason to why we hold this webinars is actually to ensure that we're giving you the right, right information. And today we have an um, we have an amazing discount on the program. I'll be telling you all about it once we just settle in and we start listening to the speakers. So just before I introduce our first speaker, allow me to go through, allow me to read his profile just a little bit. So Steven Omboya is a licensed flight operations officer and a certified aviation. Did I say avi aviation? I said aviation <laughs> management professional with over 10 years of experience in customer relationship management. Good, I can see your video already on. So prior to joining Am Amre, uh, flying doctors, where he now sits as a chief operations officer. I still remember that story. Mr. Omboya worked as a, as a corporate branding firm in South Africa as a marketing merchandise specialist. To have you in the room, Stephen, and it's always a pleasure, a real pleasure to have you on board, sir. Uh, take it away from here, sir. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Maureen. I just confirm you can hear me. 
I can hear you loud and clear, sir. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for that uh, for that intro. Um, it's, it's a pleasure to to speak on a Centonomy platform. Um, it's a company that I, I admire so much. What you guys do, uh, just bringing some very critical knowledge to. In a, in a very simplified and uh, a way that people can consume and can make a difference. So I'm always honored to speak uh, on your platform. And again, you see, you've put me with some really heavy hitters as speakers. So I'm, I'm very humbled uh, to start the session. Um, so in terms of, and I'll just dive into it because I think about, about 15 minutes or so. So I'll, I'll try and uh, uh, condense it. Um, in terms of remaining valuable in a changing market, I think I'll start by saying uh, first that um, I think the more things change, the more they stay the same, right? So uh, success and reward follows value. So I actually find it very interesting how you've structured uh, this session today about value because value is almost like timeless. If you are a person of value, you remain competitive. So the first thing I would say, uh, just from my own experience, I'll try to move in my own experience in some of the session is, um, is to get the basics right. Yeah? And the basics are you start with, everything starts with you, right? It's your responsibility to get from where you, where you are right now to where you want to go, right? So about, um, like you said, 10 years ago, um, I was 29 years old, uh, lost my job, um, Things had just gone wrong. Before that, I was in corporate branding and uh, sort of a very decent career uh, going into my 30s, you know, 27, 28, 29. I was just headed to some serious growth with very serious rewards. And then the company I worked for in South Africa closed down. And I'd been young. I'd not saved much. I had not done much. Came back to Kenya pretty much with nothing um, and sort of had to go back to my mother's house at 29. At that time, most of my friends were were just sort of really kicking off their careers very well. So I just wanted to talk maybe to that context um, in terms of the responsibility you take as yourself as a person. So the first thing is you need to get into a safe environment. And I've learned not only to get into it in such a situation is to keep it. So that's getting around the right kind of people, the people who can speak back to you, who you are, and speak positively back to you. So the, for me, that was my mother, the first person she thinks I can be, Obama. So, you know, she just 100% believes in me. And beyond that, I had friends. Uh, one of them, actually, who has become the CEO of Centonomy, who was not Centonomy then, but he was a very good friend of mine. And these people were in high school since they knew me since high school. So they just believed in me, just being around them was just getting my head right. So get in a safe space, very important to maintain a right environment. Two is you've got to work out what it is you want to achieve. You've got to be very clear about that because it speaks to the amount of drive you can have. And uh, that will speak to the next point of you've got to be prepared to work your brains out. Whatever you think is the effort that you require to produce the results you want, it's going to be more. Okay, so it's very important you are clear about what you want to achieve because it will determine that drive. And then fourthly, you've got to stay focused. And that speaks to having an attitude of course correction. In aviation, when an aircraft takes off, it has constant communication with its flight operations department, with air traffic control, because if you just leave an aircraft to fly on its own because of the elements, it will lose course. So you have, not only have you have to work hard, you have to course correct. You have to constantly get feedback about course correction. So you have to have an attitude of learning, not just working hard, but learning and course correcting. And then if you can, it's important to have a mentor. That's a whole topic, so I won't go into it, but I'll mention just as a mentor, is not sometimes we speak about like, like a big muse with a big business sitting by his feet and just receiving information. It's not like that. A mentor is anyone who's just ahead of you, even just your supervisor, somebody who is ahead of you producing the results that you want to produce and you have access to them and you can learn just the next step from them. So that's about staying focused and then, then be ready to start where you are. So for me, uh, because I came back and I switched from corporate branding and marketing going into aviation, I had to go back into training at the age of 30. I had to do uh, my certification. Then I had to start as an intern because to get, a, to get licensed, you have to get on the job training. I was 31 years old with 24, 22 year olds doing internship. The only difference is, you know, what was going on in my head was I was very clear. I want to grow and I want to grow fast. My internship was very different because I was applying myself to make sure I'm delivering value. And in a three-month period already, the chief operating officer of the organization 
was aware there's an intern here that is not the same type of intern, right? And that's how I got eventually hired. So be ready to start where you are, all right? Don't worry about too much comparison. Just start where you are and begin to grow. So I wanted to speak to just those five areas about taking responsibility, your environment, get in a safe space, then be clear about what it is you want, be ready to work your brains out, stay focused, which means stay focused is working hard with cost correction, all right? And be ready to start where you are. Parents there. Okay, good. So I think that's very important. The responsibility to grow is yours, not the company, not Centonomy, not anyone else. It's up to you to move from where you are to where you have to be. So some thoughts about staying valuable in a changing environment. Um, one is be clear what value you are bringing and then package it in a way that it can be consumed in the market or in the organization that you're in. So value is knowing what the gap is, what the need is, where, where is the demand, and then packaging your skills, experience, time, and knowledge to fit that. When those two meet, resources flow there, right? So in terms of my story, I was in sales and marketing and corporate branding, then things went south over there, and then I had to restart and then go into aviation. So when I joined my current employer, I started in the technical space, flight operations intern in the flight operations department. And then as I grew and I joined as a technical person, my thing was the need was technical. So I got super good at the technical submission. But as the department grew, there was need for management and project bit. So as I applied my technical skills, I also started to add value where there were projects. And that's how I grew to operations manager because I was handling supervisory issues. And then I grew into management to supervise and to grow the department. And the moment I became operations manager, I went for an aviation management certification because I needed to grow the department, learn supervision. And as I continued to grow the department, part of the role of the department was to offer solutions to our clients. And I saw a gap where there was a need for the clients to understand the operational solution. So I started based on my marketing experience, my corporate branding experience, engaging the clients and providing that solution. So there was a gap there where clients started to gravitate to the solutions I was giving. So then I was promoted to operations and network manager and senior management handling our international clients. And then I started to travel a lot. So I grew the department and I started to build the department so the technical side could be taken care of so I could handle the international clients. So as the department grew, eventually they were like, we need somebody who can address all the revenue lines of the organization. And because my department technically was running, they created a position of chief commercial officer at executive management to handle the entire broad spectrum more. So it's, so you've got to look at where is the need, where is the gap, and how do I package? And I was now in aviation, but I used my corporate branding marketing experience to bring it into aviation and to add value to the organization where the gap is, all right? So you've got to be clear what value you're bringing and how to package it to meet that demand. Point number two is identifying high impact areas. So it's important to work hard and you can do a lot of things in your company, but it's very important you're applying yourself where it matters most, right? Organizations respond to that, yeah? So you need to be clear about your activities and your hard work, but you have to measure where is the high impact? Where is the organization really needing that, that value? And then you shift your focus there. You can meet all other requirements, but make sure that your activity is responding to the high impact areas and that it is visible to the management, not just hard work, it's visible to the management, right? And then be prepared, be prepared, or even better, be over-prepared to take up opportunities. Um, so if you don't have a job right now, I'll tell you what over-prepared means, right? If you don't have a job right now and your next step is to get a job or to start some sort of work. And if you said to yourself, I want to work at Safaricom, that's really where I want to work. The question I'd ask you, if you ran into a lift or in travel or somewhere in public, to the HR director of Safaricom and you said to them, you know, I'd really like to work there. She said, really, where's your CV? Do you have it? Do you have your digital hard copy? Are you, read, are you walking around ready to be hired? Do you have 
an understanding of the employer you want to if they stopped you right there and started to interview would you talk about safari safaricom's experience knowledge background current planning do you know it when i went to apply for my internship i read and researched amref line doctors inside out not just the company its products services where it's going the management so when I actually got in front of the aviation director, I knew he liked rallying. I knew he liked certain activities. And that's how we started chatting. And next thing I was pretty much like, we've got to have this guy here. So if you are, if you are not over prepared to take opportunities because they come out of nowhere, you have to be ready, over prepared all the time. Um, I know there's going to be an expert, like you mentioned, is going to talk on CVs. Uh, and I've just had the privilege the past uh, five years in management, hiring people. So I'll mention a few things about that, but I know he's going to touch on them. So at, because it's, it can be frustrating when you receive CVs and I just want to let everybody know out there, you can easily stand out just with your CV. One is your CV needs to speak to the job that is being applied for. Every single time you apply for a CV, you need to tailor make your background experience to respond to that job application. Don't send just random CVs. You need to tailor make it. Uh, secondly, your CV needs to speak more to results than experience. So, for example, if you are hiring for a sales job, it's more important to say, I grew sales 4% uh, year on year for the past four years at this location than to say, I have four years experience in sales. Don't know what that means. You need to talk to results more than experience, right? And then I would say that employers are hiring based on what they see in terms of value. And you all know they are going through tons of CVs. So you need to be very straight in what you're trying to speak to when you put your CV together, because it's what goes before you, all right? And then when you come to the interview, you better be aligned to your CV and you better be prepared to come to an interview. I think that's a whole session. I almost feel like HR should always be doing talks about preparation. When you're coming to an interview, you need to be prepared 100% on all possible interview questions, but also you need to understand what you're applying for so that you can connect to what the employer is looking for. I'll leave that because I know there's an HR expert that will touch on that. And also uh, one more thing, please proofread your CV, grammar and all, <laughs> just basic, proofread your CV. Then I think I wanted to add is whatever is measured improves. Whatever is measured improves. Organization grow by measurement. So. I don't know if you've heard of key performance indicators. It's a big buzzword in organizations. Now you need to have a KPI for yourself. So if you are measuring whatever you are doing in relation to your role and always set a higher standard for yourself, if you're in a job environment, whatever your KPIs are, you need to have a higher KPI for yourself because then you'll always beat the organization's KPI and always measure what you're doing because whatever you measure will improve by default. Centronomy has got... Uh, um, uh, a training I did where they were talking about managing your finances, tracking your expenses. If you, if you just, it's like measuring what you're doing. It, um, it will tell you exactly what's going on with you. If you measured just this coming week, every hour of the day, what you did, you will know whether your career is a focus or not, right? So measure what you're doing, all right? And always set a higher bar in terms of, re, of returns. A good example is a friend of mine was telling me, um, if you're going to Mombasa, all right, and you're going in an S-class Mercedes-Benz, and I have a Vitz, right? Mombasa is about 500 kilometers. And you take your S-class Mercedes-Benz with a lovely lady cruising, cruise control, nice music. You put cruise control at 100 kilometers per hour. And I've got my Vitz. I, got, I don't have sound. I don't have aircon, And I'm doing 110 kilometers per hour. I'm going to get to Mombasa faster than you. You'll be wondering how with my Mercedes Benz with cruise control, I've got master's degree, PhD of what, and here comes the guy with a certificate pff, gets there. Why? Because I'm measuring. I'm like 500 kilometers, 110. I'm getting there faster than you. All right. So be very deliberate in measuring what you're doing and then be true to yourself and to your craft. People buy you, then they buy what you're offering and sell it even in an interview, in the current space where organizations are trying to survive and they're trying to thrive, they hire for value and results. When you show up with authenticity, it's a breath of fresh air. So stay true to yourself and your craft. I have a lady that came through my department. Uh, she joined the organization uh, when I was building the operations department about five years ago. Two years in, she was promoted. She had pushback, but 
she was number three in the interview, but she was, she was authentic. That's what we said. We said, that's what we want. And when she landed, she delivered authenticity. She's now in senior management five years later, and she has the best performing department in the organization. Just absolutely ran through that process because she's, she stayed true to who she is. And I, I'm telling you where she's going, she doesn't even know yet. Yeah, she has, she has that capacity. So stay true to yourself and keep growing your craft. And then one more thing is keep going. Okay, just keep going. Everything you hear today from all of us, we are not different. I'm talking about 10 years ago. That's how fast it's gone. I was an intern. I, I would be here listening to somebody else. Keep going. Nothing works 100% of the time, all the time. Things are going to go wrong. Keep going. Keep showing up. Everything we speak today is not going to be applied correctly by you. They will not work 100%. You take all the notes down. Even you take one thing. Something will not work this coming week. Keep going. Just keep going. Keep showing up. And remember to keep the main thing the main thing. This is your journey. It's no one else's journey. It's your journey. So you measure where you want to go. You put yourself ahead. You determine what you want to achieve. doesn't matter what's happening around you. Keep going, stay true to yourself. And I promise you like in five to 10 years, 100% predictable, not 99. I've seen this too many times in the past 10 years. Not 99, not if, 100% predictable. You'll be probably doing this talk uh, and telling people how you got ahead. So thank you so much for uh, listening to me. I think in the time I had, that's what I really wanted to share. And I hope it will be of value to you. So back to you, Maureen, thank you so much. That's really, really amazing. Always amazing, Steve. I have a couple of, did I call you Steve? Steven. <laughs> I've written down a couple of uh, very amazing points here that um, I hope guys are writing down and I'm expecting questions to come through. Indeed, Steven, you have a very, very amazing story. And something that really hit home for me was uh, just making sure that you focus your energies where they've but in the high impact areas, really, really critical. Um, just ensuring that you're also visible for your managers to see, see you. And I think that's one of the things that I'm working towards. Yes, just ensuring that I'm visible. Like when anytime somebody wants to achieve something, they'll always remember that I'm the top, I'm at the top of their mind. This is very, very amazing. I think that also uh, very I'd be keen to just mention is tracking your, your journey track down what you have done because actually you don't go back and realize this is where I need to improve on and you will definitely uh, get to the next level. Um, I'm really, really encouraged um, and I can see a number of um, a number of responses in the, in the chat box. I don't know that you can see that. Uh, he's saying, um, um, Ivy, that was really, really inspiring. Ivy, you'd better put this to work. I hope you've written down all the notes. Robert says, spot on. I like it. Uh, Vincent says, Superb, uh, Grace says, uh, wonderful talk, Stephen, having value. Yes, you need to identify your value. And I love the fact that you defined value in a very, very amazing way, very clear. Value is identifying the gaps and how to meet the demand. Yeah, so it's not just value, just you need to define it. And I love the way that Steve has defined it. And I really, really like it. I see Mackenzie says, how do you tailor yourself? That's a good question. How do you tailor yourself to suit entry level positions for your experience? How do you tailor yourself to suit entry level positions that ask for experience? Back Good. To Steve. Okay. So, so this is, a, I think, a very common frustration on um, when we ask for experience and it's, uh, you, you don't have it or you've just sort of left uni or any of that. So, Whatever the position, if they're asking for experience, the key thing is looking at your background and seeing where you can demonstrate that experience, even if you're just from uni, right? Because you did things beyond, I think what tends to happen is people focus on their academic achievements, but you've done things outside academia that can demonstrate. I was having this very discussion yesterday with someone um, where I said to them, so this area, I didn't know about because they were talking about it. And I said, but this one, speak to this, package it, put it up front because this is what they're asking for. So if you show your qualifications and you take 
something you did in your experience in your past that speaks to that experience they're asking for that's how you should you should package yourself obviously there are positions where they must have experience uh, of a certain nature and if you don't have it that's different but if you if you are sort of entry level positions they're typically they have a need and it's very important for you to find to, to try and understand what that need is for an entry level position and use think beyond your your academic or very those immediate things you're looking for and say what else have I done maybe you uh, you are part of a, a student organization or sports or whatever you bring that in but you need to describe your experience there in relation to what that position is that's what I would say for for how to package that in your package your experience for such a position entry level position very, very, um, I love, I love the response. I really love the response. So make sure you package yourself according to the position that you're applying for so that you're, you, you don't look like you're irrelevant and yet you have the experience that is required. I see a question from Vincent and he's asking, hello, Steve. Hello, Steven. what do you do when you have multiple interests? You have mentioned we should be focused. So what do you do in such a case? You have multiple interests, but you have also talked about being focused. Yeah, good question. Um, so what I would say is if you've got multiple interests, the, the critical things to identify the one that is yielding the most return or the one that currently can give you the highest output, right? Because even with multiple interests, what tends to help you produce results in all areas is momentum and results. You realize when you start running, anything has inertia. When you start running and you start winning in a particular area, other areas of your life tend to align because it just builds your confidence. So the key thing is to identify the one which has the highest impact or result, run with it because you need a focus. To produce anything that is going to be worthwhile, it needs concentrated focus. And then as you run and you create momentum and results there, you can bring in the next one and the next one because it needs focus. Even for these conglomerates that you call these big organizations that have different areas, they have focused approaches. It's never just random general because to create a result, you need concentrated focus for a period of time. So that's what you can do. And then you can time it. You start with one, you make sure it's running. It is really doing well creating. Then you can in engage the other interest. So sorry about that. Um, so sorry about that. I'll kindly request us to, un to, to mute all our mics. Um, it's a very, very good um, session we've had there. Stephen, I don't know what to say, because every time you speak, you just have a way of making somebody go back and just start evaluating their career journey, start evaluating some of the things that they put down, put down, and just to make sure that they are lining to what they should be doing. And that's really, really amazing. We are so grateful. And from Centonomy, as always, you are always bringing in value and we are so grateful for that. There are a couple of questions in the chat, but probably you can just take a few minutes just to go through them and you can respond to them. Stephen, Asante, Asante Sana, a lot of appreciation from coming in from the chat box. And just to proceed, um, picking up what Stephen has highlighted, I'll simply go through the career hub program, the program that has that has actually has sponsored this event. Look at the models that we have, making both moves, just standing out, understanding who you are. That's the only place you can make moves. Because it talks about you, you need to have a roadmap for what you want. Understanding what you want will make you, you know, stand out. And that is what we get to learn in making both moves. The second module is knowing your strengths. How do you how do you even express yourself? You don't know your strengths, especially that question that came in about, um, I do not have experience, then how do I bring that out? Understanding your strengths and how they have worked out for you in the past would really help you all just to stand out, building a personal brand. Um, Stephen did that very well. He goes into this new organization. He needs to, he went in as an intern, but he mentioned that he was a different intern and that's what the bosses identified that he was a different intern so i really really appreciate that he also mentioned about advanced career planning for financial for financial growth of course by identifying you have your kpis right so you already have that noted down so once you against what you have achieved that will also help you in, the, in ensuring that you're growing in the level of your career and the, the, the issue now 
and they stand out in that area of, uh, of expertise, of course, we are very good communicators. So thank you so much, Stephen. So our next guest, our next guest came into class. She's a, she actually sat into the class and um, I'm so excited to have her just uh, join us. Her name, I'll just quickly go through her profile. I know you're somewhere, can you turn on your video if you can? Um, let me just go ahead and actually put her a photo of her face to see her face. Her name is Florence Maundu. Apart from just being a career hub alumni, let me tell you who Florence is in a, in a second. Florence, I hope your, your, your video is already on. So this is Florence for you. Haribu sana, I can hear you, Florence. I can hear you. So let me just read uh, quickly before you just say hi to us, before you say jumbo to us, who you are. So moving back to her motherland, having lived abroad for almost three decades, meant incorporating various strategic measures to regain a sense of, of balance in all aspects of her life and find ways to live abundantly in a culture so different from what she was used to. With the aim of achieving purposeful living, Florence Amandu sought out to St. Anthony and took in, took in part one of the three St. Anthony programs, and one of them was St. Anthony Career Hub. And I've seen Florence, you have talked about Career Hub a lot, and I love the story that you shared. Finally, uh, just take it away from here and tell us um, your experience, just understand from your perspective. Of course, I'll be here shouting out and telling people the way Career Hub is a very good program. The experience sells. Take it away, Florence. Thank you very much. Um, can you see? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good, uh, good morning to all of us. Good afternoon to those who are maybe out of the country and... Uh, I am Florence Kamandu. I am a Kenyan who's just come back home a year back, a year ago. I have lived out of the country for the last 26 years. I left as a young girl, running out to look for greener pastures, as we say, gone to school. But then I went to school and came back, uh, went to school, got myself a job out there. I have been in the UN fraternity for the last yeah, 26 years that I've been out of the country. And it got to a point where I sat and I thought to myself, I have worked enough, I have given enough to the world, and I think I should start giving back to my home, where I've come from. And uh, it was actually, a very big shock to me because we were at table one time with the children who just sat up and told me and my husband that they have decided they want to come home. They've been born out there, but they feel home Africa is where they come. So that made us sit and think and uh, start making the moves to bring them home because that was their idea. And uh, children being who they are, they gave us two years to decide. And they were very clear. If you're not ready in two years, you meet us back in Kenya. And I was like, wow, OK, fine. We will do what we have to do and uh, get us back home. It was also very interesting at that point because it's, it was a time where I also started questioning myself. And I'm like, I have given so much to the world. I need to go back and give to my people where I feel valued, where I feel I'll be appreciated and where I feel I will put more value in what we're doing. So I moved out of a nonprofit organizing, a nonprofit organization mindset and uh, decided to come home and start up something for myself. So what I've done is come home on a very clean and blank uh, sheet of paper and decided I am going to rebuild my life again and rebuild it back home. So what I did is of course started uh, researching on what can be done and what I can do. And uh, whenever we came home, we always had 
we could see a lot of opportunities of what needs to be done and a lot of uh, things that you'd be like, I can do this, I can do this. But the issue is when you come home, we, we always came home on short holidays. And when you come in on a short holiday, you really don't see the real the, the, the real people or the real Kenya, that's what it is. So I just did something very crazy, woke up one day, gave in my resignation and my office thought I was just going crazy. I said, no, it's time to go. And I'm going because I have a few things I think I need to go and accomplish back home. The most important thing I told myself is I have got to shut the Europe world and open up the African world. And that meant having an open mind, an open mind to come and relearn again how life is, how life is run in Kenya, how life is run in Africa, and sit and appreciate our people. Then from that point, get to now give what I think I can give to the society. Through social media, I got to know Sentonomy and Uh, all right, uh, Florence, I'll kind of uh, kind of ask you to retake that. Uh, I think we lost you for a second. Maria Hub you can kindly because it taught me on. Can you hi Florence? Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you. Uh, we lost you for a second. A second. Um, yeah, at least we left you at that point of you went to social media and yeah, just and you came across Sentonomy, so kindly retake that. All right, then. So, from that point, uh, I, I just followed all the programs that were online through so through Sentonomy. And uh, when I came home, the first thing I did was register for the classes. So, we started, uh, I started with the 101 class, then moved into the um, moved into the entrepreneur class and then into the career hub. I mean, it's it's all so enriching for one person to be, get to learn. And when you're learning, you're learning through the Kenyan mindset, through the Kenyan context, which helps me really integrate and understand the mindset of our people back home. So that's what I have done. And uh, I have already started implementing a lot of what I have learned through the courses that I've done. So when it comes to Career Hub, what it has done for me, it has, I have looked into program, I have come across what we're doing like um, personal branding, which to me, I did not really understand at the beginning what it was, but it made sense when uh, our teacher Monesi talked to us about it. And it's something that well, I probably was leaving it without knowing it is personal branding, but it helped me understand that we are who we are and we've got to be true to ourselves and we've got to give the best of who we are in wherever we are, the, the, the setups that we are in, the social networks that we find ourselves in, and we just have to be who we are. And I think people love you for who you are, not for who you're trying to be. And I also learned through him that the most important thing is really be, you have got to just compete with yourself and not compete with the next person. You've got to be the best of yourself tomorrow than you are today. So that means that we should get into personal development, get to know who we are, get to understand ourselves, get to understand what our strong, spots are and what we can give out to add value to the world and, and, and around us. So um, that was what I've learned and um, it has given me a lot of courage. I have looked also into the networking. Well, with the pandemic, we've not had a lot of interaction with people, 
but I think it has helped me gain the confidence and go out purposefully knowing I'm going to listen to people and learn people, learn how we live here, to be able now to come up and uh, give in what I have to give in. The other thing I should say is uh, we have to have the clarity in ourselves to understand what we want to give. At my age now, we, I think I can say I've gone through a lot and I've got a lot, I've gathered a lot of experience in life and uh, it's just a matter of now getting to know how to help others also get the best out of themselves because I think that's what world, the world is all about. We should just help each other be the best of ourselves and make humanity a better place to be. So I think uh, that's what I have to say for today. And um, I'm glad to be here and I'll be ready for any questions if any there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Florence, for sharing your experience. And um, this you have spoken out very clearly that we need to take responsibility. It, and it all begins with me. I remember Stephen also mentioned that, that it all begins with me. And you have gone ahead and mentioned it again, that we need to take up responsibility of our own growth and some of the decisions that we make. And um, I think when your children just came in and I was just took me back again to um, a point that was made earlier on that um, you need to have a space, safe space. Yeah, as a person, you need to have a safe space and for your children or a safe space. And I like the fact that they are pushing you, <laughs> giving you ultimatums. Wow, the children we are raising today. <laughs> I love it, I love it. it. I'm excited that you, you talk about this program uh, with a lot of passion because you have gained the value and it has just helped you look at things from a different perspective. So how are you settling in um, currently? Just as I go through the chat, as I look for the questions, I, I will, you may allow me to ask, how are you settling currently? Well, I think I should say with the love of my family, it has been just fantastic to have that warmth around me. They have held my hand. They've walked with us and uh, introduced us to their friends because we have to create new friends right now. I have gone ahead and looked for my old friends, my, my high school friends, and we've created a clique. So it's, it's just that safe space, home. Home where everybody was there for us and home where they, they walked with us and showed us what to do and where to go. And that was the pillar that I see all of them. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, okay. I think we're experiencing a bit of network issues. But yeah, that's, a, that's a very good response to that question. And there's a very nice, a, a very interesting question from Irene. I hope you're back, Florence. There's a question for you in the chat box and a couple more. Um, I hope you're back, Florence. Yes, I, I think oh, I am. Okay. <laughs> All right, so Irene Karyoki asked, so how hard is, was East, uh, how, how hard, how dest, is it hardest? Was it to re reinvent or determine who you wanted to be career-wise? Or oh, it was how hard or easy, yeah. How hard or easy was it to reinvent yourself and determine who you wanted to be career-wise? Well, I think um, what I should say is, um, Working in the UN, I'm sorry if I get shut down, uh, you're, a, you're just a number. You produce your work, you're a number. And as long as you're producing what you, you're producing, that's all that matters. And so uh, it got to a point in life where I was like, I got bored with what I was doing. And I thought I needed a challenge. I needed to move further and uh, do something. So for me, waking up in the morning and going to work was not exciting anymore. So I think when you get to that point, it means you've grown where you are and you need to move on to something else. So it took me a while, I should say. It took me a year or two to organize my thoughts, to understand what I wanted to do, and to really feel the fear because I was like, well, I'm going home, but to what? You see? So I thank my husband who was very, he was very, 
helpful and also really was with me was like whatever it is let's do it and so and of course with the children behind my back we were like okay fine I think I think the world is telling me now move on to something else so yes it took me time mm. to to take it in to accept that I'm moving on to something else what it is I'm still defining it I have a lot of ideas but I'm still defining it but like like I said I needed first to come home erase what I have put it back in my mind into my, in my mind where I've been and start all over again so I've come with an open mind gone through a lot of shocks because culture shocks are there this is home but it's not home for me since my adult life has been outside so it learning again accepting the shocks but in my mind i know i've got to move i've got to move forward and i've got to do it so it it comes with good and bad but at the end of the day i keep the focus keep the focus know what you're out for and go for it so that is how i could answer, i can answer the question brilliant brilliant florence that is so that is right on point so keep focused and keep on moving yeah we are told we need to keep on moving um you might not achieve everything you want at that particular moment or at the rate at which you want to but you must ensure that you are moving as, as always thank you so much florence and just to go through the program that has really um helped florence to just to make sure that she has achieved some of these things um it's this career hub centonomy career hub um program and we actually call it um, initially, I used to call it making boss moves because the program is all about making boss moves. And we start the classes on the 8th of July. And guess what? This class today, we are registering it at a discount. So instead of paying 1650 guys, I mentioned about uh, managing money at some point. And of course, I'm passionate about that. So you're saving up a whole 1000 bob today. If you register, you're going to register for the program and 650 The other thing is, we understand the importance of class planning your finances pretty well. So what did we go ahead and do? We decided to just ensure that we have the payment, the tuition payment paid in smaller bits so that your pocket does, you don't strain. You know, some of these things you really don't have to strain. So the first installment you get in, you pay 1,700. Imagine sometimes when um, parents really want to, and remember it's about taking responsibility. And sometimes when somebody tells me, ah, that is a, a lot of money, I'm not disputing, but just take that amount and divide it um, with how many days? About 30 days. And tell me how much that would be per day. So if you're able to pay the first installment, second installment, third installment, fourth installment, and you'll be able to finish up the cost. And remember, the program is currently going at a 10% lockdown discount. So instead of paying 25,000 shillings, you get to pay 22,200 shillings. And what do you get to get? Florence was, was at a point of just changing from wherever she was. to advertise this program, of course, the first thing I'd say, I'd ask is, are you stuck in your career? If you want to go to the next level, make sure you sign up. So today you're signing up at 650, that is six, six and a half dollars or $6.5 dollars if you're not in the country. Um, Juliet, uh, can you contact Juliet, um, her contacts on the screen, one boy at centonomy.com. So once you send in the money, make sure you email Juliet, or even give her a call, you can as, as well WhatsApp her, she's going to respond to that. She's the amazing lady behind this amazing program. Of course, your life will not be the same again. So looking at some of the pointers that came in, yeah, about taking up responsibility, make Making sure that you position yourself so that your managers or rather the people in the management or rather the people who you need to create value to or your clients, you call them sometimes your customers, because your when I keeps on saying this, but you're a business. And for a business to succeed, you have to position yourself to ensure that your clients are able to locate you. So one of the things that you're taught in class is positioning yourself by branding yourself. So you position yourself so that the people who are critical for your career growth will identify you and will be able to pick you out. So how does the structure of the class look like? So the class is going to run for seven weeks. So it's a seven week program. You get to attend class once a week for three hours, three amazing hours, yeah? And we have different experts coming in to take you through the different models that we have. 
And then uh, the days that you have, the class option that you have is Thursday evening. So if you know your weekend is always packed, some of us, um, Saturday is, is the day we go to worship. You can always tune in on Saturday. Come in on, on Thursday evening from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Take up your class. If you're not available on Thursday, Saturday is also an option for you. Depending on your schedule, again, if you're very busy on that particular Saturday, you can say, let me just reschedule this week and I'll take up the class on Saturday. So vice versa, you attend class once a week for three impactful hours. Guys, I hope you're signing up and I hope you're sharing. Welcome to those guys who are watching us, following us from Facebook, Facebook and YouTube. We honor you. Thank you so much for the team that's training us on YouTube. Eh, we are all over, yes? And make sure you share that link so that people can watch. Whatever you are, just take a second just to share the link so that people can just sit in and listen to these important pointers that are going to help us go to the next level. So the next uh, speaker, and you know the beauty is we are giving you practical, um, practical uh, knowledge, things that you can easily go and implement. And I, I, I'm, I'm, ex, I'm excited and amazed by the speakers that have come in today. They're just giving us practical knowledge. And today we have somebody that you should be talking to. And if you were to book an appointment with him, of course, that would be at a cost. But today he's here to give this knowledge to us for free. I'll go ahead and uh, just share his details. Uh, James. So um, we, had a we have been having a conversation with James ever since I got his uh, number. And trust me, the conversations have been amazing. And uh, I must say that they are really, really enlightening. So he works in the HR space. Uh, allow me to go, quickly go ahead and put his, uh, yes, his uh, cover there. So he's James Watere. He's a human resource consultant and a career advisor. Uh, he's, um, I'll go ahead and just read the profile quickly. James Watere is a HR human resource consultant, career advisor that specializes in career branding by bringing clarity to your resume and how you write your resume as well. So LinkedIn profiles and job search strategy for busy entities. Want to learn about how your CV should look like or what to understand what an employer looks, looks for in your CV. And probably you want to revamp your CV and just understand and make sure, no, revamp your LinkedIn so that, you know, James, you'll go ahead and just tell us what LinkedIn does that CVs don't do. You know, I had that conversation the other day and I, I was so amazed at, at the difference. So um, I want to give you this opportunity to go ahead and do what you do best, James. Karibu sana. James, are you in the room? Hi, James. And I know there are a couple of questions that are coming in the chat box, Florence, if you can, you can just respond to them. I know there are a couple of questions. So can you respond to the clients as we wait for James? Cause I saw James in the room. James Watere, go ahead. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? All right, he's getting a little bit of assistance. Um, Yes, so Career Hub seven weeks. Thank you so much, Lisa, for putting that up. There's a question. So Career Hub seven week program is a one going for 600 and 650 shillings for today. That is the registration fee, but the total cost is 22,500 minus the registration fee. So once you register, you get a placement into the class. Any other question? So as we get James to get assisted, so I'll go ahead. Yes, the classes are online. Kaveke. So if you're in Kampala, if you're in Chad, you can still join in the classes online and we use Zoom. Zoom is a very amazing platform that came to save us, save our lives, save our lives. And it has uh, been used for, for, for two years now since COVID hit in, and it has offered us an amazing experience. So the classes are equally live. So the way we are having this conversation today, that's how the classes run. So we have the, the, the module, and then from there, you'll be able to ask questions. You interact with your fellow uh, participants in the room, and it's quite amazing. So um, I can see Steve uh, Steve is helping out. Steve is one of my amazing colleagues at Centronomy. He's helping out James to make sure that he's it. well situated. I can okay. hear you loud and clear. I can hear you loud and clear. So Steve Karibu, Hello. Sana. 
Hello. Hi. Hi, James. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Loud and clear, sir. Sorry, there was a technical hitch, but uh, we have been able to correct it. Ah, uh, that's a fantastic. Yes. Kindly carry it, carry it, Thank carry you very it much. away from here. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm happy to be here. I hope I'll add value to this conversation. Uh, my name is James Muya Watare. I am the managing partner of the Executive Jobs Hub. It's a company that focuses on uh, career blending and recruitment and other HR uh, roles activities. Uh, recently, I was featured in the big edition for the uh, following testimonies of people of how I have been able to repackage them during a bit uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic and how they have been able to get jobs, especially those who lost jobs during uh, the pandemic. And uh, because of that, I was able to uh, be featured in our daily nation in, in, our, in the recent newspaper, whereby um, I explained on how people can black themselves to be relevant in the current job market. I've also been on several uh, media stations, television stations, uh, local television stations, explaining uh, to people on how they can be able to brand themselves and repackage themselves uh, to meet the new demands of the workplace. So what is career blending? Let me start with the blending itself. Blending is the mark that you leave the minds of people you interact with. It is not what you say you are, but what people say you are. It is determined by what you are communicating out there. It doesn't matter whether you, are, you think you're the best in the face of us, but what people say you are, that's exactly who you are. So in career blending, um, I, there are five P's that I want to focus on for this uh, particular meeting for, for, that you can use in a repackaging yourself for career blending. The first P, and people should write down, I, I encourage you to write down, is product, defining who you are. That is the first P, product, defining who you are. We all have unique qualities that make us um, who we are. This is maybe personality, character, strength. Uh, it may be interest, it may be skills or special skills or special talents that you have. When you are looking at these qualities, you tend to think of how other people describe you. For example, are you confident? How passionate are you? Are you, are you motivated? Are you credible in whatever you do? The second P um, that helps people in uh, blending themselves is perception. How do other people see you? What are you known for? What, what can you bring in a team, in the workplace? Uh, when there is, uh, there is a presentation to be made, are you the, are you the person that the, the management goes for? When there is a moderation of a certain event, are you the person that the company goes for? So make sure you have, um, uh, you have brought themselves such that uh, there is something that you are known for in your workplace. The other P is your potential, your credibility. Your performance and your accomplishments result, results to you, you being given credibility. Think about your qualifications, your achievement, experiences. These one, these can be these these elements, uh, these factors can be able to, to define your potential. How are you able to, to leap big in your career uh, through your qualifications, through the skills that you have gained over time? The other P is positioning yourself, what I call USP. USP means unique selling point. Once you define who you are, how other people see you and your accomplishment, it is time to look at what sets you apart, your unique selling points. In other words, why should uh, a recruiter hire you? This is where you build an authority towards a specific area. For, for, exa for example, if a company needs to have um, the best financial analyst, are you the person that they can go for? If the person needs somebody who, makes, who can make a very good report, are you the person that the company can go for? Uh, if the person uh, needs somebody who can make a 
presentation in, uh, among stakeholders or in the organization? Are you the person that the organization can go for? Unique setting point, important. The other P um, that is important in your career planning is packaging. This is how you present yourself to the world. This could be through your energy, through your presence, image, or confidence. It is basically how you show up. If you know who you are and what you stand for, then it is easier for others to see it in you. But if you don't know who you are and uh, you don't know how to package yourself for people to see, to, to, uh, uh, to, for, for you to communicate to people who you are, then people are going to form a certain image of who you are if you don't communicate who you are. So there are very important questions that you need to ask yourself when, um, when, when, when you're doing the career planning. One of the questions is, what skills are you really good at? I'd notice that you could be possibly create a lasting impact. Can you create a lasting impact with the current skills that you have? Can you be able to um, be able to do something? And when you leave that room, everyone will come to notice that this was done by so and so. You are known. You are not that you are the, you are the person who can do uh, this this the, this job to the, to to maximum satisfaction to perfection. So after blending yourself, how could you use this brand to uh, get your dream job? One of the ways you can use this brand, you can project your brand out there to get your dream job is through your LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn profile has become very popular these days because most recruiters um, are searching countries on LinkedIn. It is your global platform. It is, uh, it is a proactive way of looking for job. A recruiter can bump on your profile even when you don't expect it, even when you are sleeping. Most of the requests I get from uh, uh, my, my client is, I want to work for an NGO. And I'm like, yes, you want to work for an NGO, but test by NGO. NGO is why? Is it NGO health? Is it NGO infrastructure? Which NGO do you want to work for? And then when the the country comes up with the NGO that uh, you want to work for, then we get to the, the next conversation. These NGOs, most of their headquarters are out of the country. They are in New York, they are where they originate from. They are in other in, in, in countries in Europe. So and most of this decision-making process of recruiting the, the recruitment are made in these headquarters. So when you optimize your written profile, you're able to attract the right kind of audience. You are able to attract the right kind of, of recruiters. Recruiting profile is important because you're able to use the keywords in your industry, such that if a recruiter is searching for you uh, in the search bar and is probably looking for a program manager in um, uh, a health field and he searches on the search bar, your profile is going to appear among the first hundred that is going to click uh, to find out if uh, you have uh, the qualification that they're looking for. If your LinkedIn profile is not optimized, it will not appear among the top profiles that the recruiter is going to review. So at most of uh, the, my clients, 80% of the LinkedIn profiles I have reviewed, they are not optimized. And that one is a concern to me because the recruitment have gone online. And we are in technology revolution, and uh, we, are, we are in Zoom meetings, uh, Zoom interviews. So the recruitment has have gone online and searching for candidates have gone online, has gone on LinkedIn. So it's very important for you to have an optimized LinkedIn profile. The other way you can be able to brand yourself and project yourself is using the CV, a curriculum vitae. The problem I have with the uh, most job seekers who come to seek my services is they're using an analog CV. What do I mean by analog CV? An analog CV is a CV that is not ATS compliant. What is ATS? ATS is African Tracking System. This is a system that was invented by the big corporates, the uh, Amazon, the Facebook. This is because when they advertise for a job, within a span of 24 hours, they would get like half a million applications. It would be so difficult 
it will be so difficult for the recruiters to go through uh, all those um, applications in the, in the short lifespan of the recruitment process. So they came up with uh, a tool whereby they will feed the JD of the job and they feed your CV and then they give you a certain rating. So if your CV does not probably, if they have given the rating up to 60% and your CV does not reach up to 60%, it is rejected at that stage. So you find so many people are applying for jobs, they are not getting interviews because their CV is analog. So how do you make your CV digital? You make your CV digital by customizing to the job you are applying for. You look at the keywords that have been used in the JD, and then you customize your CV using those keywords. For example, if it is finance, how they have insisted on budget management, financial analysis, uh, investment analysis. These are the skills that you include in the CV without representing yourself. If you have these skills, include them in the CV. And then you edit your summary profile to at least fit um, the language of the JD, of the job description. So um, the, the other way you can project yourself out there is when you are called for an interview. Many other times, uh, the job seekers, um, uh, they have a very good CV. They send the recruiter. The recruiter receives a CV. But the person who appears on the interview plus the CV are two different people. You try to look at the CV and the person who has come for the interview, the person cannot be able to express themselves. So it's very important that you be able to uh, prepare for the interview. And how do you prepare for the interview? Make sure you, uh, you do plenty of research to ensure that you understand the role you are interviewing for the organization and the role you have applied for. This will help you shape your key messages, deliver them clearly during an interview and ensure that you sprinkle plenty of your USP, as I talked uh, talk, unique selling point. I have talked about unique selling point in my area, in my area um, uh, slide, in my area conversation. So, um, so uh, make sure you prepare for uh, many, many times uh, uh, job seekers do not even prepare for the very basic questions that are asked during the interviews. So you wonder why somebody went for an interview is not even prepared, ask for a very simple question, but you cannot be able to answer. One of the best way that you can be able to prepare for the interview is to make sure you go through the JD. Go, your J, the JD of the job you've applied should be on your finger tips. All the questions, most of the questions, if not all, they come from the JD. Make sure that you have gone through the JD because these days uh, the recruiters have gone ahead and uh, since they know that prepare for the most common questions, now they ask for the behavioral questions. Behavioral questions now they come from uh, the JD. So when you talk of um, an ATS compliance CV, what does it comply? An ATS compliance CV, I want to give a structure of about nine, eight sections that are very important for an ATS compliant CV. The first section is your name. You should have your full name and it should be in bold. This is your blending statement. And you should have contact information just below it. That is your uh, mobile phone plus your email, and your email should be professional. At least use your two official names, and if your official names are the ones that are commonly used, you can use a, a word, a, a letter, or a hyphen, or a dash to make sure that is, is a bit, is, is not, um, is accepted, since you, uh, you cannot register a, a similar email with, a, with another person. The second section is the title section, which is, which is missing in most of the CVs that I view. This is this is the job you have this is the job you have applied. It should appear there, or something close to what you have applied without misrepresenting yourself. If you're in administration, let administration management appear at the top there. The for, the section that follows after that is your career summary. This is your elevator pitch. I usually tell my client if you are to be uh, in in a lift with the. Um, uh, one of your potential um, employers says he is, um, is a CEO of Safaricom or CEO of Amazon. What do you tell them? Would you have such a, comp a compelling elevator pitch such that by the time the lift opens the door, 
That person is going to ask for your business card. That person is going to ask for your contacts. Is, are you, is your summary that comparing? The, the, for, the section that follows after that is your key competence section. This section is so important because it's a section that you're able to customize according to the Jim, sorry about that. We lost you there. Hello, James. We lost you for a Hello, second. You if you can kindly repeat, we can loud and clear. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, we can hear you. Probably. Yes, I can. I can hear you, James. So probably you can just go over that, the very last point you're making. Okay. Okay, sorry. Sorry about that. I think you're back, you're back. I'm back, huh? Yes, you're back. So I was, I was, I was making a point where it is very important to, for you to have uh, your, your application tools optimized. And this application tool I've talked about is your LinkedIn profile should be five-star optimized, your CV should be eight years compliant, and you should be prepared for interviews. Prepare well for interviews. Even for the knock-off interview questions that we call the behavioral questions. So, um, so now, what happens now if uh, you are a fresh graduate and uh, you have not been, uh, you have, you don't have experience, and uh, where do you get jobs? Because these, these are some of the most uh, uh, commonly asked questions I get asked by some some of the clients. I'm a fresh graduate. How do I present by myself? And one of the ways I add uh, uh, the fresh graduates is to have the employability skills. These are the skills that the employers are looking for. And these skills are the communication skills. These are the presentation skills. These are the customer relation skills because these skills are not taught in schools. So you find so many graduates do not have these skills. You, you, you got your good grades, uh, uh, but you don't know what to do with the grades after you graduate. We, this the generation that is there of graduates is a generation of uh, exam takers, grammars, uh, just to focus on the grades because they were told uh, education is the key. But by the time they graduate, they realize the, the key is no longer there. They have to find the, a way of navigating the, the work environment. Yes. So, um, mm -hmm. so one of the ways that job seekers can, uh, the French graduates can, uh, can get jobs is to take advantage of the upcoming new industries. We are in the world of tech, FinTech, wealth tech, Biotech, these are industries that are require fresh mind that can be able to be trained. And, and the recruiters know in this room they require fresh minds that are flexible enough. So if you just have the employment skills and you are flexible to be trained, then it becomes easier for you to navigate the work environment. The, the, yes. All right, I have a couple of questions that are just coming through the chat box. Yes. And a number of us are asking if you could kindly for just a second, because I can see our time is also, um, flat. it's running too fast. I don't know why. I wish you could just hold on to yeah. time for a second. But probably yeah. you could just go on, you could just repeat um, the point you're making about ATS compliance. So that the, yeah. okay, that's the question. That's, uh, um, it's a very common question here. So if you could just quickly go through that would really, really appreciate. Um, I go back to the elevator pitch on the uh, CV light. Yes, yes. Okay. A quick, just a quick review on that, yeah. The, the, the elevator pitch is where you have your summary section that comes just after your contact information and the title. It should be so comparing and so convincing to the, to the, to the recruiter that he can call you for an interview. It is be so compelling such that uh, without even the recruiter going through the rest of your CV, you can be able to tell you have the you have indicated your expertise, you have indicated your experience, you have indicated your qualifications, and why you should be given this job. 
It is, I repeat, it is your elevator pitch that you can tell your potential employer. If you have always wanted to work for Facebook or Amazon, there's a pitch that you can tell the CEO of those companies that you have already wanted to work for. Prepare, always prepare well that section is very important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, great. Okay, great. And the ATS compliance, just as you finish, and probably you can give us your final yes. remarks. Yeah, ATS compliant. ATS compliant is, as I said, it was invented by corporates and it has picked up very fast even with the rock companies in Kenya because when uh, jobs are advertised, you get uh, more than 1,000 of people apply and it becomes difficult for employers uh, to go through all those applications in a short uh, span of the recruiting process because the recruiting process is very, very, you have a short span. Some companies have got one month, others two weeks, another week, so it is difficult. Uh, it's very difficult for um, um, recruiters and all hiring managers to go those applications. So what happened, there is an, an online um, 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 an, uh, a tool that is a, a technology uh, powered tool that where the JD of the job is fed and then your CV is fed and then certain rating according to the repeated words that, uh, that, uh, that have been emphasized on the JD uh, can they be found in your CV? Then it gives a certain percentage. If, for example, um, the hiring managers have indicated that the 70% is the cutoff of, uh, that, that, uh, that a CV should have to go to the next stage. If your CV does not get to the 70%, then it is rejected at that stage. That's why you find people apply for a job these days, they are not getting the feedback. Because uh, one of the most common uh, behavior of uh, the uh, job seekers, they just click and apply. They see it is customer service manager, click and apply. They don't even bother to read. They don't even bother to read from which company, from which uh, industry. They click and apply, click and apply. And what happens, uh, since you did not customize, it, your CV will be, will be rejected at the African track stage. It will never get to the hiring manager's hands. And you want your CV to get to the hiring manager's hands so that you can be called for an interview. Mm -hmm. All right, yes. thank you so much, James. Uh, it's just that time is not on our side, but I would love to stay in this session just to listen. You're an, you're an amazing trainer, I must say, because you have really, have really yes, captured a lot of things that as a person, of course, I want to grow. I'm not saying um, for a job. Hey, man, no, no, no. I'm, I'm excited at Centonomy. But the thing is, you mentioned about communication skills and behavioral, behavioral skills, and that is something that we teach in the Centonomy Career Hub. And I also know that, James, you're an alumni. So, of course, you can vote for guys just coming and taking up a program at Centonomy. So, guys, join the class. We start on the 8th of, of July, of, of, uh, 8th of July. And as I, I had mentioned today, we register at a discount, instead of registering at 1,000. Um, 1,050, we are registering at 650, which is equivalent to $6.5. $6.5, if you register today, make sure you, you communicate to Juliet. And I can see a couple of people who are private here to meet, and I have about people registered. We are so excited to be in Abana. class. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I have seen you have mentioned that you have registered. So I'll make sure you communicate with it and I'll let you know. So just before I usher in the next speaker, who is a lead trainer, a gentleman that I really admire every time this, this uh, class begins, I just have to sit in through his classes just to remind myself and just to make sure I track what I've achieved from the previous lessons. So Mwenesi Musale, who is a need consultant and a soft skills coach, he also wears quite a number of hats. He's also an entrepreneur, quite amazing trainer, very passionate about people growing, people getting to the next right skills. Talk about branding, talk about making boss moves, talk about just a social capital, which is very key because everybody, and you know, I love the way he explains the bit of social capital that every time you meet with somebody, there's always value that you can gain from that person, depending on how you would have branded yourself again, yeah? So um, Manesi Musala will be taking over just in a few seconds, just before I go through the structure of the class, because I know this has been a problem for quite a number of people. Yes, they want to, they're wondering, do I really have time? So you get to attend class once a week, 
a very impactful three hour session. So we have two days that is Thursday, when you two days in terms of options. So we have two days, Thursday from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Then we have Saturday morning from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Instead of pulling your, people still pull up their blankets to sleep on Saturday morning. Now we need to take up responsibility and make sure that we are growing. As I had mentioned earlier, that we start classes on the 8th of July. I know James Otero is still in the room. He'll be responding to some of your questions that you're throwing in the chat box. So make sure uh, you make use of him while he's still here. An amazing person, I'm sure, Florence is also in the room somewhere. Um, Mr. Steven is also in, this, in the room somewhere. So he'll be able to respond to your questions just uh, before I allow um, when Nessie, the lead trainer at Centronomy, he's an image consultant, soft skill, soft skills coach. People who have things at their fingertips. An amazing story that he has. And all of these things, you no, know, we'll just be given a tip of the iceberg. Once you come into class now, you'll understand where Monese comes from. You'll understand where he drive, his drive comes from. And he actually makes these things that look very difficult. He just breaks them down to very practical skills. So I don't know that Monese is in the room. Let me just check that out. Uh, Monese Mosalia. Let me just- Maureen, Maureen, Maureen. Oh, oh, Monese, Monese, you're in the room. Good to see you. Good to have you today. We are here with you in an event. Hmm. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> Your energy has carried this event fantastically well. Thank you so much for having me this morning and, and, thank, and thank you to, to everybody, uh, all the speakers who have come before. I've been listening in and I've, uh, wow, I, I've, I've also been learning quite a bit. I mean, James, that was an excellent um, uh, presentation. I really enjoyed that. Florence, good to see you again. Uh, Stephen, thank you again for that. And um, <clears throat> I, you, know, you know the politicians say, mine, mine is not to say much. I, I don't, <laughs> I don't stack semasana, but I want to. I want. I, I love the the title of this um, of this of this webinar today. Remaining valuable in a challenging job market. We all know how the situation has been with with not just the pandemic, but also the constriction of the economy. There's not enough money circulating and flowing around, and we are we're challenged. And and companies are challenged. Organizations are challenged. Employers are finding it more and more difficult not just to, to, to hire more people, but to promote or even keep people. So you're finding large swathes of businesses, unfortunately, are either closing or downsizing, and it becomes a bit of a challenge to remain, um, to remain uh, afloat, especially if you are, if you are an employee um, or someone who has had a steady job. So, um, I mean, there's so, ma there's so many elements of, of, of this webinar that I could speak to. But the one that I've chosen to speak to today, depending, Maureen, you'll tell me how, ma how many minutes I have to speak, because you know I can go on forever. So we need to maintain decorum. Um, I want to touch on, on, on just a small component, which, because for me, the word valuable is, it's everything. Value for me is one of the most critical things that you need to be able to, to not just have, but also exchange, all right? Value is important not just to have, but to exchange because value for value's sake is nothing. You need to be able to exchange that value for something, okay? Um, and, and the point that I want to stress on today is um, uh, 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 the theme around excellence. How to, be, how to build excellence in whatever it is that you're doing. Everybody who is, who is here, who has sacrificed uh, their Saturday morning to be with us, to listen to this, to this webinar. Um, congratulations to you. And wherever it is that you're listening to us from, it pays, guys, to understand that people will not pay for mediocre work. People will not stick their neck out for you if you're not providing quality. People will not go out of their way to promote you, to network for you, to, to endorse you or whatever, unless you have a proven record of being able to offer excellence or quality. It's as so simple as that, okay? There are exercises that we do in some of the modules in Career Hub, and that's why I love this program so much because it's such a practical um, course. You know, module two, for example, finding your strengths and facing your fears. You cannot be playing in a, in, a, in a space of weakness. You need to be able to focus on what you're good at. I know exactly what I'm not good at. Leo, today you give me an Excel sheet and start telling me to do pivot tables. I might uh, throw myself on the ground and start foaming at the mouth because those are not my things. 
But for someone else, they'll be able to do it in about two minutes, you know, understand who you are and what you're bringing to the table because employers, um, customers, clients, anybody who's a stakeholder who's going to exchange value for you will only exchange that value if you're bringing something of value to the table. Okay, so I wanted to just get that out of the way because there are a lot of other things about being seen, being heard. I love James's presentation around all of that and all of the issues around you are a business. But let's break down the concept of excellence in a small, simplified formula. <clears throat> okay, um, I, 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 I typically uh, don't use presentations. So if you, wherever you are, perhaps you can write this formula down, or if you have a good memory, good for you, you can remember it. For me, the formula around excellence that I've seen working with many organizations and individuals is excellence is the sum total or a, for, or, 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 or a formula based on time plus effort. Time plus effort in brackets multiplied by your skill, okay? Time plus effort multiplied by your skill equals excellence. And I'll go, I'll, I'll try and extract all of the detail in there because wherever it is that you're sitting, you need to ask yourself, what skill do you have and how much time and effort are you putting into that skill for it to be valuable enough to exchange with someone? Because value varies, right? Value is different depending on, on where you are. I can go from a job where I'm earning, I'm earning 10,000 shillings and do the same, same thing and earn a million shillings doing exactly the same thing. In fact, I love... I, I, I loved, uh, 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 I follow different people on, online. And one of the guys that I saw, he, he quoted Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey um, is, is, a, is a renowned comedian. He's a host, he's a, he's a presenter, he's a TV presenter. And he has his own, uh, he's created a very significant brand over the last two decades. Um, and, and, and obviously, you know, being in America, there's, there's a bigger economy there. But he says, in the 1990s, in the early 1990s, when he was a comedian, he started off uh, doing jokes at clubs for $25, okay? And the same jokes, when people in the audience discovered him, people in the audience saw, okay, wow, I, I like this guy. Can we bring him to do, uh, to do a, a session at our, at our corporate events? And at the corporate events, he used to charge $75 for his, for his skits. Then people at the corporate events were like, wow, you know, this would be great. Can you come and open for, for this person at this, at this uh, music concert? And at the music concert, the same jokes that he was doing for $75 in these corporate events, he was now doing them for $500. It went like that, like that increasing until when he did his own HBO special with the original Kings of Comedy, he was paid $37 million to do the exact same jokes that he was doing when he started off in the early 90s, okay? But it was an eight year journey of refining and doing and learning and, and delivery and all of that to the extent that the same material that he had became such of such excellence and such quality that his market share, the number of people who wanted to buy whatever it is that he was bringing on the table had increased so much that now he could charge the exact same amount that he was charging, but now it was not for himself, it was per person or per eyeball or, or what we what Americans call pay-per-view, okay? So, this this is this is something that um, and now he's got his own he's got his own TV station he's got you know I mean it's it's done you know um, but we we always tend to think that uh, and this is the problem with 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 human beings we get distracted we get distracted because we see our friends doing doing well and being successful in different parts of their life and we want to copy them so we never actually follow through with whatever it is that we're good at. We'll start being good at something, we'll be naturally inclined and talented at something, and then we will drop that thing because we see, oh, so-and-so is selling Mutumba from Uganda, or so-and-so is importing uh, um, uh, spare parts from Dubai, or this person is growing French beans, or this person has gone and decided to do an MBA. So we're looking around us instead of looking within, okay? So back to the formula. Excellence equals time plus effort multiplied by skill. Let's start with skill. What is a skill? Okay, a skill to identify your skill, you must look at what is your natural God given talent. Guys, we're all talented here. Every single one of us listening here, every single one of us in the world has a talent. You're not just put on this earth for, for sport. There's something unique about you, there's something that you are bringing to the table that someone somewhere will enjoy. Okay, and there's an, and, and the other thing is that it's not about other people enjoying it, it's about what comes naturally to you anyway. 
Okay, in, in, in Career Hub, we call this flow. And, and if you join the session, the module, you'll understand that flow is, is, you know, things like, for example, when you do something and you lose track, you, you don't even realize time is going. When you do something, you don't even feel hungry. You don't feel like you're uncomfortable. When you do something, you do it so well that people come to ask you for advice. When you do something or you see it being done somewhere else, you're drawn to it. So we'll, there, there are ways of identifying flow, but it's all of that natural God-given and talent that is that exists inside of you some of you can listen are, are very good at listening some of you are very good at excel some of you are very good at cooking some of you are very good at at identifying gaps some of you are operationally very good some of you like procedure some of you like admin whatever it is that you naturally are inclined to you're an interior designer you're a fashion person you're a, whatever it is it doesn't actually matter but if it if you are drawn to it and you can identify your flow then that is something that you build on, okay? I would equate talent to, um, I don't know if you guys will be able to see this, but I wear a lot of accessories. So this is a ring, right? This ring, this ring started off as, as iron ore in the ground. By the time it's on my finger, by the time, by the, this was done by a very amazing jeweler, Brian Kivuti, lovely guy. But this ring, by the time the silver came from the ground, it was raw silver. It was just raw there. That's what talent is. It's raw. It's, it's raw iron. I, uh, it's a raw metal. You have to get it out of the ground. You have, there's a lot of stuff that has to happen to that silver before it gets onto my, onto my hand. It has to go through a whole lot of stuff. That is, what, that, is, that is what we're talking about here. The silver is not just going to magically appear and become valuable on my hand. No, you have to dig it out first. You have to do stuff to it. You have to pound it. You have to melt it. You have to sand it. You have to polish it. You have to bend it. You have to mold it. You have to do so many things to it that it now becomes valuable and someone can sell it to you for a whole bunch of money. That is what your talent is. So, being, so once you've identified your talent, what gives you flow? The next point is to turn to invest a little bit of time. We call it learning and looping. You have to learn and loop, learn, loop, learn, loop. Invest a little bit of time in it so that that, that talent eventually becomes a skill. And once it becomes a skill, the, the point at which it becomes a skill is where people start to say, you know what, Maureen, I like what you're doing. Can you come and do it for me? The minute people start making requests of you, Understand that that is the point where it is now a skill. And the minute a request is made from you, you are now in pole position or what we call a position of power from a bargaining perspective to now do the, the thing that we've been talking about called value exchange. Once your talent has gotten to a point where enough people or someone sees it and says, wow, I love what you're doing. And they can now say, listen, please, can you come and do this for me? You are now in a position to say, I will come and do this for you if you give me X, Y, or Z. And that's where the exchange happens. And I love Career Hub again, because in, in module five, we actually teach you how to do that negotiation, that back and forth, that, that, that discussion around, you know, what, what, what's in it for me? How do, I get, how do I get mine? How do I get what, what I deserve in the negotiation? In advanced career planning, that's one of the things that we talk about. So you've identified your talent, you've turned it into a skill. So it's something that you're good at. Lionel Messi today will play football for free. Beyonce will sing for free. Serena Williams will play tennis for free. Lewis Hamilton will drive a Formula One car for free because he enjoys it. It comes naturally to him. But what are you guys doing for free now that you enjoy? And are you getting paid or are you getting value? Are you able to extract value from it? And one of the things that we talk about in Career Hub is it's not just about the money that you get. It's about whether the value that you're getting is helping your brand. Is it growing your network? Is it giving you access? Is it opening up new opportunities and angles for you to benefit? OK, think of yourself as a business. Businesses are not just about bottom line. It's not just money. It's about market share. It's about, um, you know, extending and improving your product, growing your portfolio. So many things. So these are some of the things that we talk about when, we, when I speak about excellence. If you are a receptionist, for example, OK, how, how much of, 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 of your niche skill have you been able to develop? Yeah, for it to become a skill that someone can say, you know what, I need this give me this, do this for me, give me this. We, one of the things that we dispel in the first module of Syntonomy is, um, in, in terms of mindset, is we, people come and they say, you know, I'm just being used in my job. You know, I feel like people are just using me. I feel so used. I'm, they're just, I'm just being used. 
and uh, I'm tired of being used. Munesi, how can I stop myself from being used? And they get shocked when I say, that's the whole point. That's the whole point. The whole point of being somewhere is so that people can use you because the opposite of being useful is useless. And nobody wants to be around or deal with a useless person. So if you're of no use, you are of no value. Okay, so the, the, the concept of I'm being used, kill that story, because that's, the, that's what we're here for. If, you, if, you are, if you're serving no purpose, you're bringing nothing to the table, then it doesn't matter. So if you don't have a skill that someone can use, if you don't have something that someone can take and say, I, I like this, I want to use this, then it, does, it, it doesn't matter. Okay, so skill is the first thing. The second thing is time. Okay. Time, I talk about learning and looping, but time is important. And in fact, it's something that we talk about in the Career Hub course over and over and over because ladies and gentlemen, we all have the same 24 hours. Every single one of us has the same 24 hours. The only question here is, how are you spending your 24 hours? How am I spending my 24 hours? How is Uhuru Kenyatta spending his 24 hours or Donald Trump or Maureen or Kenneth or James or any of the people in this, in this, uh, in this session or any of the people that you've ever heard about? Because we are the sum total of how we spend our time because when time is finished, then we die and then that's it. Then it doesn't matter about planning and our jobs and careers and it doesn't matter, okay? So how much time are you spending growing and developing that skill? How much time are you spending doing what you're doing over and over and over and perfecting it? If you were to do an audit, and this is the essence of, 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 of time here, because on a daily basis, I want to encourage people to do a time audit do a time audit because honestly, if you are honest to yourself, you will look at your, at your 24 hours and you will realize that you're wasting a whole bunch of time doing a whole bunch of nothing that is not helping your skill set. Okay? That is, not, that is not contributing to you growing that skill to become valuable. All right? How many man hours are you putting into the, the, the raw talent that you have on a daily basis? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your job is or what your career is. If you're good at something, the, and 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 I learned I learned this from Mark Cuban, yeah. Uh, and he it was well I didn't learn it. I I had already I knew about it, but he re, he reinforced it with something that he said. And Mark Cuban is a billionaire who is on Shark Tank and 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 he's very well known and he's an entrepreneur and all of that. But he says passion is a lie. Okay, and I agree with him completely. For me, passion is a fruit. So the minute I hear the word passion, I feel, yeah, whatever. But being passionate about something is not the point. Mark Cuban says he was passionate about basketball, but no amount of passion will make you an excellent basketball player. You being passionate about it, you loving it has nothing to do with you being good at it or being excellent at it and extracting value from it. He says his passion in basketball was was neither here nor there because it he did not spend time on a basketball court practicing doing the the moves doing the play learning how to play basketball so him being passionate about basketball is not the point how many man hours did he actually put into playing basketball for him to become excellent when you look at someone like michael jordan michael jordan spent hours and hours and hours on the court cristiano ronaldo one of the best football players on the planet you, he was the he was the first one in he's he's the first one in the training ground and the last one to leave. In fact, most most places where he's been at Real Madrid and Manchester United, even now at Juventus, he would be the last person. They would even come and switch off the lights just so that he can leave the training field because he would be there practicing free kicks. And then people get shocked why he gets paid half a million half a million pounds a week because he's practicing. You cannot, you, cannot grow your, 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 you cannot grow your skill into excellence if you're not putting man hours into it. In fact, to give you an idea how important man hours is, if any of you have ever been on an aeroplane or, you, or any of you are pilots, you will appreciate that a pilot cannot get their license until they complete a certain number of man hours. All right, because it's not about theory and and knowing things and being passionate. Oh, I love flying. No, it's not about loving flying. It's about how many times have you sat in that cockpit to understand the different dynamics or situations or scenarios that are happening. And this is why in most recruitment exercises, people always ask for you about years of experience. And then people come back and say, well, what do they expect? Where am I supposed to get years of experience? A beg now, a beg. Are you waiting for someone to give you the opportunity to do what you love? You're sitting waiting for someone 
to give you the opportunity to do what you love. Yeah, it's up to you to put in those those, those hours. For me, I talk for a living, and I and I, I'm in business development, and I'm in and I'm in stakeholder management and crisis management and all of that. I'm here talking to you guys today. I'm going to talk for the rest of today in different forums. After this, I have another meeting, I have another session, I have other things that I'm doing, but I'm constantly refining what I know how to do best, and that is why when I come to present this value, I am able to say, okay, Maureen, now I've given you this value. This is what I want in return. I can exchange that value. So when I'm, if a recruiter wanted to recruit me and ask me, Munesi, how many years of experience do you have doing this? I can go back and point out and say, I have done this. I have, I've used my talent here, 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 here. It's not about how many jobs have you had in this line? No, it's about where have you had the opportunity to use your skill, to use your talent? Where have you used it? Where have, how many, how many, how many hours have you put into that skill? Bruce Lee, uh, one of the greatest martial artists um, that has ever lived, says, I don't fear the man who has done the same kick, who has done 10,000 kicks once. I am more concerned about the man who has done the same kick 10,000 times because that man knows more about his body, knows, has, has developed such excellence in that kick that he can do that kick standing. He, in fact, Bruce Lee, I think he's the guy who invented the one, the, one, the one inch punch where it's like one inch away from someone and he can punch you and, you, and, 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 and it can affect you greatly because he, the amount of time he spent perfecting what he was good at was immense. So I challenge you guys, how much time are you spending on what you're good at? Because no one is going to pay for, 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 for mediocre work. I repeat that. If you're doing mediocre stuff and you expect someone to go out of their way and give you value, you're lying to yourself. All right. The last part here is effort. Okay. And I'll close on this, on this point. Effort means the ability to push boundaries and create newness. Okay. Because if, if your body has never done anything before, let's, let's use the example of going to a gym, all right? You go to a gym, day one, someone tells you, okay, run on the treadmill for five minutes. By the first minute, you feel like death has, has come to you. You feel like, you know, uh, the heavens will open and swallow you because you're like, why, why do people put themselves through this punishment? Yeah, because your body is doing something that it has never experience before. It is pushing a new boundary. It is creating a new paradigm that it has never experienced before. That is what improvement is about. Improvement is not, is not an event that is supposed to happen without, without pain or effort. You can't improve anything without pushing a boundary or creating newness, okay? Improvement means going beyond what is already there. If you cannot bring newness to your space, to your industry, to your, and that's why the whole point of getting a master's degree or a PhD is you're bringing something new into that academic space that has never been thought of or brought before. That is why when you are a doctor of philosophy, it is because you have written a thesis that is bringing a new thought process and you can defend that newness in time. What do entrepreneurs do? Entrepreneurs create newness. And in Career Hub, we will teach you as employees how to be entrepreneurs, how to create new paradigms where you are, all right? That is the, that is the whole concept of effort. Effort is, is, I know it sounds bad to say it's pain, but that's what it is because, you know, the first time you go to the gym and you run for, for one minute and you feel like you're going to die, by day four, day five, day six, and you see how time comes into play here? By the sixth day of you running, if on day one, you could only do one minute, by day six, now you're doing five minutes. By the 10th day, you can do 10 minutes. Months in the gym, you are now the person who is pushing the limits. Before you know it, you're saying, oh, you know, I should enter this marathon and whatever. Whereas on the first day, you thought this is the, this is the worst thing that, that, that can happen to you, all right? So if you're not pushing boundaries or creating newness, you're not improving. And you're not building excellence because that's what people want. We are always human beings, and you realize, as it's another theme that is common, we we get bored easily. We tend to be like, oh, ah, been there, ah, seen that, ah, okay, G give me something new, you know. <clears throat> oh, you you're an accountant. You you can balance my my books. Oh, that's nice. What else can you do? Oh, you're a, you're a social media person. Oh, you can you can post something. Oh, that's nice. What else can you do? Because we're never satisfied. 
So if you are satisfied where you are, if you become complacent and you say, well, I know what I've done. I know what I can do. Let me know, Don't disturb me. This is my JD. This is my KPI. This is what I know how to do. And you stick there. As we say, you will die like soap. All right. Soap starts very big. And then the more you use it, it goes, goes as it finishes. All right. So please, you must be pushing boundaries. You must be creating value. If you're not creating newness, there's no value there. If you're doing the same thing over and over and over again, and then you still want to go at the end of the, of the year and say, hi, can I get a raise, appraisal, I want, you know, 10%, I don't know what. All of those things are, are pointless, yeah? Success belongs to those who can create value. And especially in this, in this time where the, the economy and the job market is very challenging, those who are creating value and creating newness, and it's not just newness for the sake of newness. It is excellent newness. It is excellent creativity because you've spent time and effort developing it. Those people will be successful. So I will pause there and leave it because time is critical. Um, if people have questions, comments, if I've triggered anybody, I apologize. But uh, thank you very much for allowing me to, to say those things. <laughs> As always, being your authentic self, when I say thank you so much, no, to chop it, it's okay, it is fine. It's fine to be told the truth, it is okay, because this is how, this is the, the only way uh, we'll be able to push ourselves on the boundaries that we've set ourselves uh, for. And um, I'm excited, excited that you have comments that are coming in. Sorry about that. Um, somebody pointed that out, and yeah, of course, it hit me, it really hit me. And um, was it Dorothy? No, it wasn't Dorothy. Just a second. Great insight. That's Kaveke Mulandi saying. Great insight, Manesi Musalia. We have to invest our time and time audit. Very, very important. If you are of no use, you are of no value. So in other words, Manesi said you are the opposite of no use is actually use is useless. So we cannot afford to be there. So guys, it all begins with you creating value, understanding where the gaps are, building capacity to ensure that you're able to deliver and fill in the gaps. You know, being the person that identified pain points, identifies pain points, and you're able to stand in the gap and ensuring that you're filling that up. That's the only way that you remain valuable. And the first step for us at Career Hub is ensuring that you're gaining the right knowledge and the right skills to be able to become competitive. competitive. And this man, Musalia keeps on saying in class that if you do not, you might have a lot of value, but for as long as you're not harnessing that potential, it's as good as dead. Then you have no use. You have no, nobody will identify you. So guys, I'll encourage us to sign up for the program, not because you need to, not because we, you are making sales today, but because of the value that you're going to get. The value is great, making boss moves, so making sure that you're able to stand out Knowing your value, that is what making boss moves is all about. Identifying your strengths and making sure that you're making use of them to be able to take, you know, to take, to get to the next level of your career. Building a personal brand, very key. What do people say when you leave the room? And I remember one of the questions that Manessi asked me, asked me during the class, and <laughs> that really threw me back. That the things, things that people say about you, what do people say about you? And it's very critical. So you need to understand what people are saying about you to understand the kind of brand that you have. And once you identify that, work on what you need to achieve. Social capital, another module that is very opening. Most people don't get jobs because they have the right qualifications or probably you've done this and that. But it's because you have the right network and you're making use of those networks. Because now you want to understand your, you know, the value that you have, you'll present yourself very well. And that this is something that you're taught in depth in the social capital class, advanced career planning for financial growth. Guys, we must plan. As a person who needs to add value, you must always, you must constantly your career. If you want to get to the pinnacle of your career, and when Nessie has mentioned it, it's never about passion, but it's about the effort. About the effort that you put into work, the time that the skills that you have and how best are you sharpening your skills to ensure that you're obtaining excellence. Because once you become an excellent, you become an authentic leader in your space. Yeah. And how best do you communicate? You get to come to class and you learn about effective communication skills. Body language, how you express yourself, very critical. 
Okay. Yeah, good. So what are we talking? So we start on the 8th of July, guys. Sign up today. We get to sign up for only six and fifty shillings, which is equivalent to six hundred, about six point five dollars. So six point five dollars. So sign up today. Um, once you sign up, I will kindly request to email one boy. Her name is Juliet. She is one boy. Juliet one boy at internalmedia.com. That's her number right right there. And to, for, to register today, you can send in your money via Mpesa. If you're outside Kenya. Uh, you can always contact us and we'll give you uh, a process on how you can register as well because I know we have had a bit of difficulties, but we'll give you proper direction. But make sure you sign in. Go to MPESA right now. Once you go to the MPESA menu, go to pay bill, enter the pay bill number as 966850, which is also the business number on the uh, MPESA menu. And then the account number as your first name. So I'll definitely sign up as Maureen. Maureen and then Korea. Maureen, Korea. Then we'll be able to know that you have registered for the class. So if you're an international student, you also have bank details. Um, you can take a quick screenshot for that so that you have the details with you. If you're an international student, Kampala, uh, Uganda, ah. Tanzania. We've had international students picking up this program and trust me. They have made a difference, a big difference. Difference. And then if you're asking yourself, okay, now I really want to know how this class works, and you have so many questions. We have gone ahead and set up a career, a career ex, a free career hub experience for you. So sign up for the free experience. Visit our website at events, uh, events. We've also set it up on events break. Kindly sign six. Uh, for, that is one and a half hours from six p.m. to seven thirty p.m. All the class runs and some of the things that are expected in the class. But sign up for today. Make sure you enjoy the expected of the discount that is there with us today, six hundred and fifty, and you get to sign up for the program. And a lot of things that we have signed up, and this cannot end without passing my gratitude on behalf of the tournament. Uh, Steven, you have you are so amazing. Thank you so much for the insight, for sharing your story, your career journey. You know, you have been working for a period of time, then you decide to come back in Kenya, and you decide, you know what, I'm I better go back and get a skill. Saint Anna is offering that as well. Come back and get a skill, and he decides to sign up as an intern in an organization that he had always wanted to work for. Yeah, so start from wherever you are. Florence comes in, came in and she shared her experience about relocating from the West to back to the country and just settling in and just trying to identify, rather trying to find out what she really wanted to do. And the career her program really helped her out in set, settling down. James Lotera brought in his expertise on how your LinkedIn should look like. Your CV, some of us have applied for jobs. Yeah, we used to apply for jobs and you never get what is it called? Any responses, my goodness. So you have been told the secret. And if you want to listen in again, we have the recording on Facebook, we have it on YouTube, share that with your friends. And finally, our lead trainer, Mwenesi, always bringing in his A game. <coughs> and by the way, <laughs> allow me to call. Mwenesi is very passionate, not very passionate and passion is a fruit. He, he, loves, he loves empowering people so that they can just become the best, they can become the best at whatever they are doing. So guys, sign up, sign up, sign up, just the signing up details. So if you have any question, please email Wamboi at Centonomy. Wamboi, and how do you spell it? Wamboi, that is W-A-M-B-U-I, Centonomy.com. She's going to give you more details on that. And don't forget to join us for the free travel experience class on the 10th fourth of june just to get to understand how does this work yeah so karibuni sana and a very big thanks to the team at centonomy and all the participants who took their time and for sure we can attest that you guys are purposeful people and at this point i know you have picked up a couple of things that you need to uh change uh probably a little bit to ensure that you are creating what's in your career because most of us started creating started with the job market once you employ, that's when we started building our careers and living abundantly. Because if you're able to get the flow that Manessi said, you just work without getting, without getting tired, 
you always find yourself uh, when somebody is doing something wrong in that particular area, you want, you feel like you just want to go and correct them, tell them, hey, that's not how it's done. This is how you do it. And you become an expert in your area. So once you get the flow, so sign up for the Career Hub program and let's see you in class. Asante Sana for amazing speakers and have a lovely, lovely week, guys. Thank you, ciao. Thank you, bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. We do appreciate it. Thank you. That was great. Thank you so much. And sign up for the class and the free experiences. Well, we look forward to you there. Bye. 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 That was Bye. awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for being an amazing participant as well. Bye. Bye. Two hours have elapsed so quickly. Thank you, Santanomi, for such a wonderful um forum. Bye. Bye.